do that, I have to teach you guys some linear algebra. Uh, who's had a class of linear algebra? Two people? Are you, are you have minors in math or something? You're getting minors in math? This is not a required course. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, we're only going to have like one, so <laughs> that's more. Yeah, but, uh, and of course, those of you who had res 3, which is a, you know, a significant part of the class, because uh, you had me, um, we, we did, uh, I guess, uh, I didn't even take the time to do this in res 3. I, I don't know why. I just assumed you guys knew it. But for the most part there, we were using, always using the computer to perform the <coughs> operation. So we just sort of, Use it as a black box. So here, and it's and it's it's really because of the the eigenvalue stuff that we need. I, I need to teach you a little bit about eigenvalues. Do you guys remember eigenvalues? When yeah. eigenvalues are very important in engineering. They come. They show up everywhere. Who's heard the word eigenvalue? Who knows what they are? Yeah, I mean the mathematical <laughs> definition, but. Like, who can give an example of where they show up in engineering analysis? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So they also will use it to as a to diagonalize a stress field in this class. <coughs> don't worry if you don't know what that means yet. Um, they, they also, you know, the, the eigenvalues themselves are typically fundamental um, modes of vibration. Right? So, you know, if you're driving down the car, I mean, has, has anyone ever noticed that like, you're driving down the car, the, driving down the road in your car, and you ever paid attention to your uh, your antenna? Right. Most of the time, your antenna doesn't move; it just kind of sits there and maybe it moves a little bit, but Occasionally, uh, if you if you get say just in the perfect wind conditions, uh, at the right speed, then your your antenna can sort of begin to violent, violently shake, like just for apparently no reason. If you slow down or you speed up, then um, another example of, from your car also is like when your tires are out of balance, right? So you know usually if your tires are out of balance, your car will shake pretty violently, but if you just slow down or speed up, it, it goes away, right? And, and that's that's the same idea. And so you can actually use an eigenvalue problem. So a, the reason your, your car's shaking is because you're you're driving at the perfect resonant frequency of the tire that's out of balance. And you can actually solve an eigenvalue problem to tell you exactly what that resonant frequency is. So it's kind of cool. But anyway, so uh, the main reason I feel the need to teach you some linear algebra in this class is is because we're going to use the eigenvalue problem to solve for the principal stresses and directions, OK? Uh, and so we'll just go through some basics, because assume that most of you haven't had linear algebra. I mean, for those of you that have had it, this will be a very boring review. And even for the people that had res 3 already, I mean, things like ve matrix vector multiplication, uh, you should know, right? Uh, you certainly know how to do it in MATLAB. Right? So if you haven't. You know, a lot of times we would write this equation like, um, say, a vector C is equal to a matrix A times a vector B. And the way you actually perform this, so there, there I have it written out in components. But the, the way you actually perform this, so C1, and, and I like to use words here, so I like to say that C1 is the dot product of the first row of the matrix A with B. Right? And then you know, C2 is the dot product of the second row with B. And then C3 is the dot pro product of the third row with B. And of course, everybody knows what a dot product is, right? 
Another new one, a dog product here. With two vectors. So, you know, there is the dot product written out. So it's just the entries, you know, B1 times A11. So, if, and again, we're talking about the dot product of the first row times B, and it's just A11, B1 plus A12, B2 plus A13, B3. And there, and there. So in words, CI is the dot product of the ith row of A with respect to B, uh, with B, with the vector B. So then matrix multiplication is just, so I assume probably all of you know, uh, know how to do uh, matrix vector. You probably definitely know that. But you may not know the actual operations in matrix matrix multiplication. So let's go through that real quickly. So in this, the C11 is the dot product of the first row of A with the first column of B. Again, if, so now we have a matrix C, a matrix A, and a matrix B. Right? So C11 is the dot product of the first row of A with the first column of B. C12 then is the dot product of the first row of A and the second column of B. C13 is the dot product of the first row of A with the third column of B. And these, I think I changed the code. These, these generalize to larger matrices, of course, yeah, these rules. So then let's just do uh, one more. So for example, C32 would be what? third row of A and the second column of B. So again, I just like to remember it in words. Cij, where the ij is the indice of the C matrix, right? the ij indice is the dot product of the ith row of A with the jth column of B. So, let's work an example. So this is our matrix A. This is our vector B. I'll try to always write matrices and square braces and vectors uh, in, in the curly braces. And vectors are always column vectors. So if I write a vector, if I write a vector B, you know, understand that that's a you know a column vector. If I write a vector B transpose, then that could be a row vector, the same vector transpose into a row. Uh, so let's work this guy out, and I'm going to be very explicit. Right? I know this is probably too easy for you guys, but again, it's the first row of A times B, right, dot, dot product with B. So that's 2 times 1 plus 1 times 2. Right. 
Um, and the second, it's the second row of A times B. So 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2. So then just working out the math, we have 4 and 7. And then we want to do two matrices we'll have the same A and then now we'll have a matrix B so again this is A this is B so we have the first entry and I'll, I'll put some lines here to help us so the first entry which is going to go in this upper upper left box is the first row of A times the dot product with the first column of B. So that's 2 times 1 plus 1 times 1. And the second entry that's going to go here is the first row of A times the second column of B. So 3 times 2 plus 2 times 1. This one is the second row of A times the first column of B. 3, 1 plus 2 times 1. And this is the second column of A, second row of A, second column of B. So 3 times 3 plus 2 times 2. And then that equals, just doing the math, 3, 8, 5. Now, of course, we're engineers, so all we care about is solving problems and solving them correctly. So once you can demonstrate that you can do this once, you should never do it by hand again. You should always use a computer. So these are just the two examples that I just worked. Uh, the determinant of a matrix. Okay. So, who, who's remember what the, the formula for a determinant of a matrix is? A D minus B C, right? So, you can remember that, or I always sort of do it, remember it graphically that you know it's. I just make an X, right? So, so it's it's A times. A times D, and then B times C. Right? So A times D minus B times C. And the reason I do it that way is, is that when you get to two by two matrices, I mean or three by three matrices or bigger matrices, it, it can help sort of to visually picture what what you're doing, right? So. You can memorize the formula. I mean, it's there for a three by three. And really, all I think, the, you know, primarily the, the main matrices we're going to deal with in this class are three by threes because we're going to deal with a stress tensor. Technically, a, a tensor is not the same thing as a matrix, but a second order tensor is the same thing. A, a stress tensor can be thought of as a three by three matrix. Let's just say that. So I know you guys don't know what a stress tensor is yet. But we'll, we'll we'll get to that, and, and it's part of the reason we have to talk about matrices. <coughs> so you can memorize the formula, or what I do is I just say, okay, I'm going to take A, and I'm going to cross out the row and column of A, and then I'm going to take this determinant the same way. So I'm going to say A, and then times the determinant of this guy, this little submatrix. And that's a 2 by 2, and we know we just use this x. E times i minus uh, j times f times h. Right? Then there's a subtlety because the next term has a minus sign in front of it, so the, the terms alternate plus, minus, plus, minus. But then I would just do the same thing. I would come in here and say b and cross out the rows and columns, 
and then take the determinant of what's left. So D times I minus F times G. And then the last one is C. Cross out the row and column and take the determinant of what's <coughs> left. D times I minus E times G. And so that gives you the formula. And so determinants are useful. Um, one of the one of the things they're most useful for is determining if a, if a system of equations has a solution. Right? So we're going to, you know, a lot of times we, and, and those of you that have taken reservoir simulation, we did it basically all the, the whole class. We solved equations of the form, you know, AX equal to B, where A is a matrix, X and B are vectors, and the determinant of A can tell us if a is invertible or not. So the solution to this equation is x is equal to A inverse times B. And if the determinant, the determinant can tell us if this thing exists or not, because it doesn't always exist. The inverse of a matrix is not guaranteed to exist. If it doesn't exist, the matrix is called singular. And who knows what condition about the determinant tells us if the matrix is singular, if it's zero, if it's zero. So if the, if the determinant is zero, we have a singular matrix A, and A inverse won't exist. We can't, we can't solve that equation. I should say a unique solution does, won't exist. A inverse won't exist, therefore a unique solution won't exist. There is a, there is a possibility still that uh, there could be infinite, infinitely many solutions. So that's one of the most useful things about the determinant. Again, we'll use it in, in solving for eigenvalues soon. And so, <clears throat> I think this is a good place to stop. <laughs>